this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today to dye some yarn with Easter egg dye tablets. I love using these dry concentrated tablets that come in Easter egg dye kits such as this one to dye yarn. Um, what I have here is what's called a cake of yarn. It's a center pull ball that I created using a yarn wind, a ball winder. And you've got yarn that's from the center that's just as exposed um, from either side as the outside versus a ball of yarn you would wind by hand where only the outermost yarn would really be exposed. In the past, I've shown that you can get some really cool asymmetric colorways. And my plan today is to take the nine dye tablets from this kit and insert them into this cake of yarn so that way we can get some cool color effects. The, this yarn cake is a hundred grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. And in my experience, this is a yarn that takes up dye extremely well, so I really enjoy using it. I got this kit on clearance last year, and so this is a dye kit that contains nine different colors, yellow, orange, red, pink, purple, blue, teal, a dark green, and a lime green. I have never used all nine of these color tablets at the same time. So I am very interested to see what we're going to get. The tablets that come out of the kit look like this. The nine tablets come in two different packages. Um, I'm assuming that the six might have been the same as the classic kit last year. Um, 2017's classic kit comes with nine colors. So I don't quite know what we're going to end up with. If you want to know the color of your dye tablets before you start, you can use a damp paper towel and kind of rub the tablet onto the towel to get a sense of the color before you start. But I just want to go for it today and use them completely dry and sort of guesstimate which colors are which based on the pigments that I see. I'm putting on some gloves so that way I can avoid changing my own hands colors. And I'm going to cut open these kits. So while I don't know exactly what color is what, I know those are probably the orange. These are the blue and green. Uh, this is an indeterminate, and these are probably the pink, red, and purple. Again, I can't say for 100% certainty this is really just me taking a guess. Because I know in one of my other dyeing kits, the lime green kind of lost, the tablet looked like it lost some of the color, but the green that I used to dye the egg was still very much there. So now I want to insert these tablets around my cake of yarn. And let's just go for it. I'm gonna do a blue one, just straight in the center. And I'm going to kind of continue to go outwards. Um, what will happen is that as, and this cake of yarn is completely dry, as the water which will have vinegar in it, penetrates this cake, what we will, the, these tablets will dissolve and then will start to spread. And so some of the colors will come out into the water bath, but others will stay kind of within the yarn. And I have no idea how closely I'm placing these together or anything like that. We'll just have to see how this goes. I've never done one, I've inserted these tablets into a cake of yarn before, but I've never done one where all of them have been inserted around. I've always let some to go on the outside. So I am curious to see how these colors will combine. 
All right, an unsuspecting cake of yarn. And now we just need to put it in some water with vinegar and watch and see what will happen. Here I have a pot of eight cups of boiling water and I am going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar. I have another four cups of water ready to go on the side in case I need it. So I'm going to add the vinegar, stir this up, and then reduce the heat. Because I want the water to be hot, but I do not need a boiling boil, rolling boil or even much of a simmer to help the dye adhere to the yarn. Now there may not quite be enough water to cover my ball of yarn. And I'm totally okay with that for now. Because I kind of just want to see what's going to happen and I'm okay with the ball starting out partially submerged and then adding more water to cover it after the fact. It is also helpful to have a, some kind of slotted spatula on hand um, so this way you can press down the yarn as needed but I'm excited to partially submerge this ball of yarn and see what we get. Are you ready? All right, we're floating. I don't think any of the dye tablets are submerged yet. We're still kind of floating. The water slowly wicking up. Do you see any color yet? Not quite, but we do have an indie fur. Remove that. <sighs> indie is my dog. I don't want to move this a ton. Oh, I see some color. Can you see? Do you see the yellow? The yellow on the side over there? Woohoohoo! Add some color. I think I am going to add a little, oops, sorry guys. I am going to add a little more water. I don't want the color to stay too, ooh, I see some green. Can you see the green? There's some green showing up back over there. So I just added got another cup of water. Slowly, slowly. All right, I've got a total of 10 cups of water now. And I've increased the heat a bit since I was adding cool water. And you can see some, there's the green. You can see the green and yellow sort of coming out a bit. Aha! Look at the center! <laughs> We're getting some blue! <laughs> so this might take a while for these colors to appear. It's been 7 minutes and 30 seconds since I last spoke to you and this yarn is looking really really cool. Uh, not a lot of changes have happened that we can see on the outside. But, I have a feeling that just below the surface, we have a lot, can you see? Just beneath the surface, we have a lot of color happening. And that looks predominantly blue. Wow. I wonder what other kinds of colors we might have in there. I don't really know. But, I do think just to kind of mix things up, that I am going to add two more cups of water Oops. to now be able to completely, oops, ha, submerge. Well, that did something. <laughs> completely submerge the yarn. Um, well, that is pretty. 
we might still have some white, but at the very least the the coloration of the blues on top will probably be different. And I really can't wait, although I will, um, I can't wait to flip this over so you can see what's on the other side. This is really cool blue and green, and that's most of what we're seeing right now. I see a hint of pink here and a hint of pink over there. Um, and certainly there's some darker color in the center, but that's where I put a blue tablet. But there's pink, there's red, there's orange, there's purple, and there's more green. So clearly I've seen a lime green and we've seen the yellow. And so I cannot wait to find the other colors, but we might not find those until the cake has cooled and we start unraveling it. But now I am going to wait, I think another 10 minutes, and then we'll see if the dye bath has started to clear, and if not, then, you know, maybe we'll flip it over to see what's going on on the bottom. It's now been approximately 20 minutes since I first added the yarn to the pot, and the dye bath still has a reasonable amount of color in it, um, and I am extremely curious about what's going on underneath, but I am going to avoid temptation to flip it but I am going to turn off the low level of heat to allow this to start cooling down. And for now, I'm gonna leave the cake in the pot to see if it'll absorb any more of the dye that's around. Now I've mentioned this in other videos, but I don't think I've mentioned it today. Red food colorings absorb to yarn faster than blues, and I'm not entirely sure about yellow, but the reds absorb much faster. This is something that allows you to get the beautiful breaking that we see in my breaking violet tutorials because the violet food coloring is made up of a mixture of red and blue so the red will bind to the yard first, the blue will spread out more and it gives us these really cool separation of color. But this time we started with multiple colors and we aren't seeing a lot of the red or the orange, we're seeing blue and yellow. So because I inserted all of these tie tablets within the yarn, I bet that when we unravel it, we are gonna find localized sections that have reddish tones. We do see a couple hints of pink here or there, but most likely the pink dyes remained a lot uh, more localized. So now all I have to do is just wait and try to be patient. <laughs> The pot has now cooled considerably so that I can comfortably touch it, but the water doesn't appear to be clearing anymore, so I am going to remove the cake from the pot carefully. I'm gonna dye myself. Aha! Uh -huh. I see some other color. Whoa! You are not gonna believe what just happened. <laughs> I pick it up and a ton of dye comes out the bottom. Wowie! I certainly did not expect that. That was like a big old dump of dye. It must have been trapped. Oh, there actually doesn't seem to be that much pigment in it. Uh, it's got a greenish hue and it looks a lot darker than it is. You can see I dipped this paper towel in it. Uh, I dipped this paper towel in it and there's barely, barely any color there. Um, but certainly what's in the pot looks pretty black. I'm really surprised. See there, you almost can't see the bottom. So there is a lot of green left over. I know I'm going to need to wash this cake heavily. Alright, let's take a peek at this cake. Isn't it beautiful? Now, at the angle you may not really be able to see, but oh yeah, there's lots of all kinds of colors are leaching out the bottom. There's definitely red and blue and different colored sections, but man, I've never had so much 
uh, coloring week out. This is new. All right, let's. There's definitely like some particulates. Okay, I stick that back in for a minute because maybe I can rinse it out. Oops, I've got the paper towel in there. Um, I might just be succeeding in making a. Ha! Look at that. See, there's some orange stuff in that paper towel coming out. That is so strange. I'm so used to having all all the color end up in the end, but ooh, look at that red. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, there's a red section down here. Uh, I'm so used to having all of the color end up in the yarn that I haven't had something like this happen for a while. I do want to let the yarn cool as much as possible. I don't want to manipulate it too much, but I can't help. Okay, we've got some blue, and I think there's even some, oh, there's some white. Ooh, look, there's the purple. Uh, okay, so we've got, we've got, ooh, white. Interesting, and there's the red back there. So it's possible that some of these pellets didn't even get the chance to dissolve entirely. I don't even know. <laughs> Surprise! Or as my kid would say, surprised. Look at all that color coming out. I'm totally gonna get my hand dyed. Uh, so this, these fibers are definitely, definitely gonna need some washing. <laughs> but I am excited to see what our final yarn will look like. Ooh, green, dark green. All right, let's arrange this. Let's leave this to cool. Okay, I now have some lukewarm rinse water and I am gonna start rinsing off this cake. Oh, look at all this color coming out possible some of the pellets haven't completely dissolved. Uh, given the amount of color you see coming out, I think that that is likely the case. Interesting. Um, certainly we do have color that did absorb to the yarn. Um, Whoa. But there's a lot that did not. So I'm going to be washing this gently with some liquid dish soap. I will probably need, oops, there we go. I will probably need to wash this again after I have wound this cake into a skein. I'm gently pressing and trying to remove as much of this dye as possible. I don't want to agitate the fibers too much, um, but I am going to keep, normally you would wash until the rider one's clear, but it's hard when we're in this ball form. Um, but look, we have some dark, really vibrant colors with green, blue, and red that we see on one side. And here where we had the top, it's very much more pastel because those were exposed for less time. All right, round two. Still, there is a lot, a lot, I tell you, of dye left in this cake. This, how many, I don't know how many of my videos you've watched, but so many times I say, oh, wash until the water, water runs clear. But it's really not that big a deal and when I show you, because I don't show you what it's like when the water isn't clear. Um, so, 
I have a lot of washing ahead of me. I'm not going to worry about the water being clear, totally clear at this stage. In fact, I think I might leave it to just soak a little bit and then come back and press periodically to try to remove as much of the dye as I can. The main goal is I want to avoid dyeing myself and my home when I wind this yarn around my Knitty Knotty. So that is the main thing that I want to prevent. Um, and obviously I want to avoid felting, but look, I'm, I don't have to get sections of white. Look how localized this red tablet looks. I mean, that's what we would expect because the red binds um, in such a small area. Looks like the orange did too. Cool. So hopefully this will result in a very beautiful, fun yarn. But, and hopefully I don't, in my washing attempts, destroy this cake too badly. Uh, <laughs> as I'm manhandling this, trying to get the dye out. So wish me luck. I am going to keep rinsing and I will be back when I'm ready to start winding it. I have my Nitty Knotty ready to go and I am about to start winding this cake of yarn onto the Nitty Knotty so that way I can rinse any additional excess dye out of the fibers and allow the skein to dry. I made this Nitty Knotty out of PVC pipe and there are instructions on how to make your own on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. So one more time, I'm just gonna show, you know, we've got all these colors still in the yarn. The green on the outside kind of reminds me of the green of that plastic that's put in Easter baskets. So I'm curious to see how far this will carry on into the skein, and I can't wait to see what colors we end up with. I'm part of the way through unraveling this cake of yarn, and in some spots you can really see where the red dye was localized and how the blue dye spread. Here you've got the red spot, an orange spot, and even a bit of one of the green spots. And over here, there's another one. It's not too close. Um, the top of the yarn cake still looks pretty cool. But what's kind of exciting is that there's also some white patches. For now, this is where we are color-wise while we're winding. There is still some dye left in the yarn. I am going to need to wash it again after I'm done winding it. But I thought that you would like to see what our cake is looking like in this intermediate step. Here is the finished yarn wound onto the Nitty Knotty. Our asymmetric colorway started out with this sort of lime green, um, yellow green, and then transitioned into a pretty rainbow section where we had lots of red, orange, blue, and teal. And finally, we transitioned into this, there's, it kind of ranges between green and blue, almost a teal that was the center of the cake. I have not washed this yarn again yet, but there was a tiny bit of dye that ended up on the paper towel and on my hands, so I still need to wash it one more time, and then I will let it dry again and show you the finished yarn. Here is the finished yarn. Very little dye came out as I washed this the second time. Most of the dye had already come out in the original wash. If you are experiencing a lot of color bleeding in a home dyeing experiment, I recommend that you soak the yarn in some water with you know, a tablespoon or two of vinegar for a while and depending on the level of bleeding you're getting from your color, uh, consider microwaving it or heating it in some other method, again, to try to help the remaining dye absorb the yarn. But sometimes you just use too much food coloring and you really just need a bunch of rinsing to get it out. These colors are so fun. 
I have never used nine different Easter egg dye tablets at the same time. But this is vibrant and bright and would become a fun scarf or something. I'm not really sure what I will make with this, but I really enjoy these asymmetric colorways. And this one transitions from starting with this really cool limish green into this, I don't know, white based, but really multicolor variegated section before ending up in this deep teal blue and green section. Thank you so much for watching this dyeing video. I hope that you are inspired to try some dyeing experiments of your own. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and happy dyeing!